What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders, now Tyler Perry's sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night only on BET. All right, sisters fans, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit subscribe. Click the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content to the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Uh, this video is more or less, I don't know, maybe season three predictions or at the very least to just be as, uh, you know, up front and forward. This video is basically exploring unresolved, unfinished plot points from season two that will bleed over into season three and you know pretty much let us know what we can possibly expect in the next season of sisters now i'm not going to rant on here because i've already done like a 40 minute video doing that you know i wasn't a big fan of the finale because to be completely honest you know a lot of characters felt unlike themselves and if they were acting a certain way it's like tyler perry regress them to their worst personality traits as opposed to showing true growth it's almost as if these characters were butchered for no other reason than to you know what we need to have these characters act a certain way that way it makes sense why we are taking certain storylines and pushing them into yet another season as opposed to concluding anything so now that i really think about it looking back at the finale and like i said i'm not going to rant and rave on it i've done that plenty already I do feel like um, nothing really got, yeah, for yeah for a season finale, nothing really felt conclusive. It didn't really feel like anything was accomplished. It felt like everything moved back instead of nothing moving forward. But, uh, you know, and these are just my notes here in front of me. Yes, I did write notes to be organized. Um, you know, there are any things that you feel, well, Jeremy, here's something I think will happen in season three, or well, Jeremy, here's something from season one that never really got finalized in one or two. So maybe it'll be in three. Feel free to let me know in the comments. So I, on my list here, I have about 10 things, 10 things. Um, number one, in no particular order, mind you, uh, number one, you know, I don't know if this counts as plot points, but you know, missing characters, you know, there are certain characters who just did not appear in season two at all. And I was disappointed by it. And I was hoping that they would show up at some point, you know, like uh, Leslie, the private eye or private investigator. Uh, the, well, the P.I. private investigator, uh, you know, Morris, um, Miss Lisa, you know, uh, Karen's mother. You know, I feel like these were some key characters in season one who definitely would have added more depth to certain storylines in season two. You know, obviously the characters I listed aside from Lisa's mom would really be focused more on the Andy storyline, you know, Jasmine, Morris, and um, uh, Leslie. Like Jasmine was in season two, but it just felt too late for me because I do feel like there were key moments in season two where it would have been great for, you know, like Morris and Jasmine to pop up if for nothing more than just a brief cameo, you know, like when Gary talked about how, Hey, here's all the paperwork for the divorce. And I was, I, my name's been cleared. Uh, you know, this was Jasmine and Morris conspiring against me. And you know, when Jasmine talking about how she has nothing to lose and everything, I, did, did her and Morris just decide to split because their plan was foiled. So yeah, I just really wish there were some key moments where I felt like some development was, well necessary but unfortunately it didn't really happen so i do hope that in season two or season three i mean we get some of these characters who i really wish were here like miss lisa you know what would her take be on zach and fatima or karen and aaron or you know the fact that zach and karen had sex it would just be very interesting to see what would happen because when you think about it miss lisa was indirectly responsible hear me out for hooking up zach and fatima because Miss Lisa got her boyfriend Chris to talk to Zach about chain breakers. And then, of course, when Zach went to chain breakers, that's when Fatima hit him with the car. And then, you know, that's how they met to begin with. So it would be very interesting to see if she would have a certain take on the fact that her daughter and Zach have now separated. But at the same time, Zach is doing better for himself. So it would be very interesting to get her perspective on that. Uh, the next thing on the list is, you know, well... And I don't want to harken on this too much, but uh, the credit card, you know, 
we know it wasn't Zach. It was a female client, but the audience doesn't know the exact person. It feels like everybody, you know, all the girls, they know because they saw the footage, but obviously we didn't. So the credit card stuff, I hope it gets followed up on. Like, like I said in the finale review, I honestly at this point don't care who used the card. It could be Pam, it could be whoever, or the preacher's wife, whoever. But I just wish that we could have at least had Karen apologize for getting Zach arrested when it wasn't him. Uh, then the next thing is uh, Karen's choice. And he at, at this point, I'm really talking about, you know, the different characters and their storylines kind of, you know, uh, Karen's choice. Will she um, will she choose to be with Zach because she said in the finale, well, you know, well, he I want to call Zach, but it doesn't matter. He's with somebody else now. But, you know, Fatima kicked Zach out. And the question is, you know, with him on his own and hopefully using that money to get his own place soon. Will he end up getting the phone call from Karen or will he call Karen or what's going to be the thing with that? And then the whole Aaron thing, you know, she said she wanted to call Aaron, but you know, remember, uh, she, he was giving her space to make up her mind and it would just, it's, it, it's semi unrealistic unre enough that Aaron just sat around after seeing them having sex and is like, okay, I'll give you two space, but to actually, you know, instantly answer the call and say, okay, I'll come over. When it's only been a few hours since you've seen him having sex and, you know, he would think, OK, so Karen, did you make up your mind yet? Yeah, I have. But then you realize, no, Karen hasn't made up her mind about her and Zach. She only made up her mind, quotation marks, made up her mind because he's with somebody else. So that's not really fair to Aaron at all. Uh, then we go on with uh, Fatima and Zach. Obviously, I feel like the biggest story everybody wants to see. Are they going to get back together? What's going to happen to Fatima and Zach? Uh, you know, there's always going to be conflict with that because obviously you couldn't, you, you can't have Zach too happy because if, if so, then what, what would even be the main story? I feel like, you know, the Fatima and Zach dynamic that, well, that relationship, even though they technically aren't dating, that definitely has, uh, surpassed the Andy. Yeah, that's, it's crazy because Zach and Fatima, their story I feel has more of a fan base and more people willing to discuss it than Andy and Gary because for the most part everybody I've said this a while ago I'm just done with Andy I feel like a lot of people are like you know what just this Gary this Andy Gary crap no it's stupid she's dumb so Zach and Fatima are definitely like the Zach and Kelly like from Saved by the Bell the uh Steve and well no I hate to say Steve and Laura because I'm not a big fan of that quote-unquote couple basically the star couple of the show so to speak um which leads into the hate and blackmail. Now, remember, Jasmine, with a gun, shot Gary twice, has the gun pointed at Andy. So I'm wondering what's going to happen next. And it's like, well, Jeremy, what does it have to do with Hayden? No security cameras in a parking garage. Hayden had video footage of the entire altercation between Jasmine, her two girls, Andy, and then Fatima with a gun. So I wonder if his video will be used in some way, shape, or form as blackmail, collateral. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Gary, is he alive or not? I, I've done at least two or three videos on that very subject and I feel like there's nothing really, uh, to talk about, to be completely honest here. But, you know, if he is dead, then what does that mean for the Andy storyline? I honestly don't think he's dead, but in my, uh, is Gary dead video, I talked about how it would be pretty interesting if, um, it turns out, you know, he's in a wheelchair or something. What would that do to the Andy character? Will she stand by her man? Will she decide if you're a Delilah fan and you know Nate and Christine, will she be like Christine's like, you know what? I, I can't do this. I can't do this. And it will be very interesting to uh, um, see how that's going to play out. Uh, next up, let me see here. Okay, just one moment. Can't read my own writing. Uh, yeah, the Danny thing. I... I feel like I'm more interested in Danny and her interactions with other characters as opposed to her relationship with Preston. I don't dislike Preston. I just hate the unnecessary drama Danny brings to their dynamic with her insecurities and unwillingness to, well, for lack of a better phrase, simply listen, listen to Preston. I mean, anytime he tries to talk, it's essentially shut up and let me undo your pants. That's literally it. And when he's just trying to understand her better as a person, she gets mad. So when he does something, not knowing it will piss her off, she gets pissed and then he has to apologize for it. And it's just the same dynamic over and over again. So Danny's thing, like I said, I, I, I think the finale 
was probably the only episode I could say in season two, I despise Danny. Like, trust me, there there have been a a couple, just a couple of moments throughout season two where I didn't like how she was acting like, you know, when Preston's sister was at dinner. But overall, I feel like the finale was the only episode where I can say I could not stand Danny for one second. But other than that, you know, her interactions with the other girls, the fact that she is the truth teller, but everybody just treated her like an outcast. But then it's like, whenever she said something, shut up, that's dumb, you're being rude, you're being you're being harsh, you're being mean. But as soon as Sabrina or Karen said the same thing several episodes later, Danny, why are you so quiet? Well, I tried to tell you the exact same thing four weeks ago, four episodes ago, but I was told I was out of line, so I ain't saying a damn thing now. That's the Danny I like. Uh, next up, Calvin and Sabrina. I honestly don't give a crap because, I mean, the whole, for a majority of season two, Maurice spoke for the audience saying that, you know, hey, you, you just leave each other alone, move on. But then all of a sudden the finale, yeah, just do something drastic, do something different and try to get her that way. Which leads to the whole Jacoby thing because a lot of people have been making some good claims that maybe Jacoby is somehow setting up Sabrina drug test, sexual harassment, whatever, and using that as leverage. Hey, I got blackmail on you, Sabrina. So, or basically you could tell, or just speak with Maurice directly. Like, Hey, I got some uh, dirt on your girl and I can use it to press charges or get her fired. If you don't drop the charges against my boy, Alonzo, very interesting. Uh, and then finally, finally, Andy's decision, which kind of leads to what I said about Gary's life. What is Andy going to do? Uh, not career-wise, but in terms of, you know, the whole Gary, will she go through with getting married? What's going to happen if it turns out he's dead? Or, you know, what's going to happen with that? You know, will she choose Paris or another guy? I don't know. But I'm very, well, I'm not very, but I'm semi-interested to see what Andy's next move in season three is going to be. Especially after the whole Jasmine thing. If it turns out she's alive because she doesn't get shot or Jasmine runs out of bullets or Jasmine gets arrested, I don't know. Do you think that'll be the thing to finally open her eyes and say, you know what, Gary, I can't do this shit. But then again, you could look at everything that uh, Aaron's ex-wife's family did to Karen, yet she still chose to be with him until she had sex with Zach. Really makes you think that these women are crazy. So with that being said, like, um, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, there could be other elements of season two or season one that I forgot about that haven't been fully resolved yet. And could be brought up in season three. Like what other plot points? Uh, are there any particular storylines that you're interested in seeing next season? Uh, June 9th is when the show picks up. Remember, it's, it got filmed a while back. I, to my knowledge, I don't have any information on a synopsis or episode descriptions yet. But I'll be sure to come across titles and synopsis soon enough. I'm pretty sure they'll be popping up soon. And I'll do videos on them. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if there was something that I hope for more than any plot line or storyline in season three, it's just growth and to make it feel like the characters are actually moving on. Because if the show continues at the same level, or should I say the lack of progression, I honestly don't see how Sisters could go more than three seasons. Because ratings wise, sure, it will go on for a while possibly, but... I just don't want to be on this ride and I'm, and I'm not seeing these characters actually moving forward. They're just making, okay, it's the end of season two, yet they're still making early season one mistakes despite it seeming like they've somewhat grown or learned from their lessons. So I hope that's something that changes in season three. But like I said before, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. And I will talk to you in the next video.